You know, folks, there's no doubt in my mind that crappie fishing is, no doubt, one of the most challenging fish they are to catch. And a lot of times, or the great majority of the time, I go by water temperature and time of year to locate and figure out the migratory route of crappie. Throughout the winter, this is a great technique. I'm fixing to show you a great technique to catch crappie. Um, and all of it is based on the migratory route, which is simply the crappie staying around forage. And the forage is going to be thread fin shad or gizzard shad about that long. Now, that don't mean that's the, the only way to catch them on that lake. I've always stated there's several different patterns on any lake at any given time that will work catching crappie. But the natural migration route of, of crappie is what I look for. And it's taken me years to develop um, a feel for it and the knowledge as far as water temp time of year and also the presence of shad, of course. Uh, is very important, but once all that is put together, and I put that together on water, uh, on the water, y'all excuse me, this bait right here is second to none as far as catching big crappie, this bait is, like I said, second to none. The spinner on it, well, the fish recognizes that flash as an injured shad or a weak shad. They'll instinctively come to it. Because in these big schools of shad, what's happening is that you're going to have weak shad and dying shad at all times. At all times. And these fish is going to pick off the injured shad. Not the healthy ones. We're talking about big schools of shad. So that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that, that flash, a dying quivering shad. And that's why this bait, I believe, is so effective. I tell you what, some of the biggest crappie, which I've said this before, that I've ever caught has been on an underspin. It's been on the doggone underspin, up shallower. And I'm talking about in cold water. Whoa! Golly, what a crappie. Golly. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what makes it worth it. One here, one there. But when you do catch one, it's a big one. That fish is barely hooked. Right? Oh my goodness, barely hooked. There he is. See what I mean? His mouth tore a little bit. When you hook them right there, their mouth a tear. Easy and don't get off a lot of times. You gotta take it easy with a crappie. That's why I like to use light action rods or ultra light rods. That's a beautiful fish right there. Woo, let's let him go. Let's let him go right there. Ain't that beautiful? What I'm fishing with today is a sow belly rod six and a half feet long this is eight pound braid and i have this underspin tied directly to the braid um usually i'll use a fluorocarbon leader but you really don't have to and that's a palomar knot that's a crappie magnet on the back of it this is a leland underspin one thirty second of an ounce now this reel right here, I've never used it through an underspin before. It's a Garcia Revo. That fish was suspended over 14 feet of water, but he was only about three feet deep. They're just out here milling around on this shad, but maintaining um, depth control is what one needs to practice when you're fishing with a with a jig or a bait like this an underspin learning how to keep it at the depth where the fish are biting once you catch a couple fish you'll know 
Oh, there's a lot of fish in here. Most of them are, are yellow bass. But just a steady wine, like I've said many times, is all you need for a, an underspin. Okay, I'm at three feet, and I'm just bringing it back real slow. That's all I'm doing. Just enough for those blades to turn, but I'm keeping a constant depth of around three to four feet right now. That blade gives off all the action you need. It looks like a shad to them. And believe you me, it is full of shad in here. Everywhere I fish is going to be shad. I guarantee y'all that. I will not fish unless there's a lot of bait fish around. I've learned that a long time ago. I, I, you're just sort of wasting your time. There's a fish. Ooh. There he is. Nice crappie. Nice black crappie. Let's flip him in. That's how it works. It's calm out here. It's, it was windy at the house. I feared it'd be real windy out here, but it's early in the morning. I, it'll probably get windy. That's a black crappie, about 11 and a half. Let's let him go right here. Let's let him go. I tell you what, that's the color right there that's getting the job done right now. That's it. Look at the action on that bait. I tell you, a crappie magnet is probably the best trailer. If I had only one trailer to throw, you know, uh, well, <laughs> that Z-Man trailer's tough too, tough to beat, folks. But, you know, that crappie magnet's good too. They're pretty equal. Let me just put it that way. Let's be real honest about it. Those two are my favorite. The Shad Fry Z and the Baller uh, Z. Both of those are great trailers. But that crappie magnet's right up there with it. With them. They ain't no doubt. I catch a lot of fish on this bait right here. There he is. Golly, this is a good crappie too. Well, he's not as big as I thought he was, but he's a, he's a nice one. Let's see how deep that fish hit. Six feet of water. I found another place right here. I've been searching, looking, and <laughs> voila. That's about a oh, 11 inch crappie, probably. Boy, he hit it. Boom. Hit it right there. 6.3 feet of water. Let's see what the water temperature is right here. 59 degrees on top, but that fish wanted it. Now that's an indication they want the bait. We're going to have to get our pliers to get this one off. So what I'm doing right here is something that I do a lot. And uh, I'm looking for fish. And this is my search bait. Number one search bait right here. Now I well we're gonna there he is. That's my number one search bait. Right there. He has an underspin. Let's go. Let's let him go. Now I've thrown a beetle spin. I probably ain't going to show that and they won't react to it. A lot of times a beetle spin will react to it even better. I work between both of those. This is the way right here that you could catch that two and a half or three pound crappie. And I've been catching a lot of them over two. Nah, that was a little bluegill or something. I've been catching a lot of fish way over two. 
close to two and a half pounds, some of them. But when I do catch a crappie in an area, what I'll do is stick with that area for a while. In other words, I'll make a lot of different, a lot of cast in that area. I'll fan cast it before moving on because, you know, sometimes you'll find a big school of fish. You could. You run off and leave them if you just catch one. So even though I'm just catching one here, one there, I'll still, when I catch one, I'll fish it real thoroughly before I move on. There he is. Golly. That fish hit it and went to the, to the right with it with that bait. Sometimes I'll hit it go to, going to the right, to the left, away from you, which is a hard, hard strike. Sometimes I'll hit it and come straight to you, but there's another fish right there. About 45 yards from where I caught the last one, you see. So that was a lot of cast in between times. But look what a big crappie. I've been catching them quite a bit bigger than this one right here, but but I'll take him. They could be some big ones in here. It's a new location. I'm see that <laughs> I underestimated him. That's a 14 inch fish. 13 three quarter, 14 inch fish. That's a good crappie. Let's let him go. Boy, boy, thank you, boy. Now, right now, bridges are the deal. And these fish have flocked to these bridges. A kind of a lot of shad are relating to the to the columns. But in fish are, or schools of fish are coming in and out. But folks, the truth is that's not the only only excuse me only pattern in the fall. You can go out here and you can catch these scattered crappie like this. And on the average. These fish here is going to be bigger than what you'll catch under the bridges. On the average. Now, sometimes there's some big fish up under them bridges, no doubt. But these rogue crappie like this, I surprise you. This is how you catch really, really big ones. And I'm surprised I hadn't caught some big white crappie. We just hadn't run into them yet, but I'm fishing the correct pattern for that. I'm talking about the big, big, huge white crappie. How you doing there, hey? There he is. That one comes straight to me now. I had to actually catch up to this fish, and this is a big one. He hit it and just comes straight to me. That could be a white crappie. Let's see. If it is, it'd be the first one I've caught. Golly. No, it's just a big black crappie. And I mean a good one. But yeah, he hit it and come straight to me, folks. Golly. <laughs> Y'all see the power? I can't tell you how hard these fish are fighting. They're big. That's the reason. Here, this, I got a net right here. I don't know why I ain't been letting them. Years of bass fishing. I'm used to lipping them, but golly. Let's check him out. Yeah, he's not as big as some of them that I've caught, but he's still a good fish, good crappie. That fish hit it hard. He, he hit it, boom, and then he comes straight to me. They'll hit these baits at so many different angles, but now, as far as, now look how he eat it. I talk about that a lot. You know that your color is right. You know that the speed of your retrieve is right. And, of course, the depth is right. These fish are coming up and always fish high for cropping. Um, I figure they're probably about six to seven feet deep and they're coming up and getting the bait that's what I think but uh, when everything's right that's what happened 
watch him right there. There he goes. <laughs> he realized he was loose. And then he went he went on anyway. But that eight pound test, you know, I knew it wouldn't work for long. I tried. I, I tied the wreck to that eight pound braid. But what happens, I'll show you what happens. And the reason why I did that is because I get a lot of comments still about is crappie line shine. They're not. They're definite. They definitely ain't. I, most time I use high vis mono for crappie. Uh, with with other the uh, with, with other uh, techniques. Excuse me, folks. But yeah, what happened? That eight pound braid was is so small diameter. It will get um, it a weave. In this snap ring right here, it a uh, uh, weave right here where, where that swivel's being held here on the bottom of the bait. It'll get in there and all that kind of stuff. So what I've done is tied a short fluorocarbon leader, one of about three feet. I mean, you could cut, you could tie one two foot. It's bigger in diameter and it won't go in those places and it cause you a bunch of trouble, but. If I was using some, uh, a little bit, what was that, a little bluegill or something. If I was using a little heavier braid, like maybe, I don't know, 10 pound test braid and tied direct to it, it probably wouldn't do that. But braid is real small in diameter. It just handles on these, on these spinning reels, it handles, handles perfect. But I ended up having to tie a little short later. I just wanted to let y'all know why. I was trying not to, but it was giving me a lot of trouble. But I haven't so far caught two crappie in the same area. These are rogue fish. Now I'm throwing and throwing and throwing, obviously in the same place that I just caught that fish. Now I'm getting a lot of bluegill bites, but that's about it. But I'll fish the area thorough before I move on. See, all I'm doing is covering a lot of water. That's actually all I'm... Look here. We got us a crappie. That one made a... I don't like to say liar. A fibber out of me, folks. <laughs> Good fish, too. He was close to the same area. That's the first time that that's happened. I actually seen that crappie come up and get it. I mean, let's see how he's hooked right here. Let's check him out. I believe we can bring him on in like that. Quit. Okay. Quit. When they when they shake their head, if y'all noticed, I do that a lot, especially on the heavier fish. Like when you lip them, and I lip them real, real gentle. When they start shaking their head, I'll do this, give with them, because they can actually see see how they're hinged, how their jaws are hinged. It's real delicate right in there. You could actually break his little jaw if you handle him too, too, too rough, and he won't be able to feed. So when you let him go, he's just going to end up dying. They're they're pretty delicate fish, really. Uh, if I'm going to release them, I, I make sure that I handle them real, real delicately. I'm stuttering a lot. I normally don't stutter a bit, but the reason why is because that last fish has got me thinking. You know, I'm thinking, why is that the only fish that did that? Everything else has been just one here and one there. Could there be some more right here is what I'm thinking. And for no particular reason, there's nothing special about this hole. I mean, it's just I'm fishing where it drops off. Over the top of the actual drop off. And the fish are biting anywhere from six to five, six feet deep. They're not very deep. Over about 12, 14 feet of water. It's just not a, they're just moving up and down these drops right now.
There he is. Golly. Golly. Wow. Wow. Now, what do we got? What in the world what have we got? This is a crappie, which it feels like it's a good one. I set the hook into that fish, and it was just like setting it into a rock. Of course, this is a light action rod, but still. Oh, my goodness. Look here. Oh, my, my. My, my, we're going to certainly net this one. God, why was that fish so mean? Because he's a good one. Come here, boy. <laughs> Golly. Y'all, look at this now. Look at there. Let's get right here so we can get a good look at it. I want y'all to look at there what a crappie. Golly. I'm not kidding. When I set the hook, it was just like a doggone <coughs> rock on the other side of it. He didn't give it all. So he must have hit that going away from me. But a beautiful, big old slab of fish. Let's let him go. Watch him. He's going to jump. There it goes. Folks, there's no doubt about it that I have a ball out here. This is where I belong. I feel at home out here. It's a sport that's second to none as far as I'm concerned. And it's a sport that anybody, if you want to, can excel in and learn something every day. Today, I learned two things. Two things that never have never has dawned on me before and just about every time that I come out here I learn something I'm talking about fish behavior and fish behavior has always been fascinating to me I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all thank y'all for all the great comments um, when you're in doubt you trust in the Lord that's what he wants you to do go to him Tell him your problems. Pray about it, folks. And you'll see. Woo. Woo. They're drilling. Shoo, that stink. That does stink. Woo. Hey, man. And remember, go fishing when you can. Call 